What's good, everyone? It's the one, the only, and while Fino, if you guys enjoy NFL, NBA content, want to see some gaming content in the near future, give this video a like. If you're new, go and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. Now, let's go on and get into this video. I had another team preview, man. The last team preview for the AFC North. Um, we ran through the Cincinnati Bengals, ran through the Cleveland Browns, ran through the Pittsburgh Steelers, and now it's the Baltimore Ravens' turn. The winners of the division last season and um man should be a great one now before i do get into the baltimore ravens 2018 2000, uh 2019 2020 team preview make sure you show some love to the previous videos i have done um show some love check it out you're pretty good now let's go ahead let's get into the baltimore ravens team preview for the upcoming season um Let's go ahead and speak on the um, offense. Oh, before I touch on the offense, I do want to say um, John Harbaugh is still there as a head coach. There was some talks um, for um, him possibly being out of Baltimore, but um, you know, Baltimore Ravens they made it to the playoffs last year, and that kind of helped John Harbaugh case to stay in Baltimore. So I just want to touch on that. John Harbaugh, pretty good coach. My experience has a has a Super Bowl ring, so you know John Harbaugh is still there. And um, also, before I get into the shout out to Engraving Vids, team keep it clean, man. Always enjoy his vids. He makes Baltimore Ravens content, but he also makes um, content for all NFL teams. So y'all make sure y'all check him out. And he's just a good person overall. So show him some love. But let's go and get to it, man. Let's start with the offense. And we're going to start off with the quarterback, man. The sophomore quarterback going to his sophomore year. Lamar Jackson, man. Um, Lamar Jackson, man. Um, he Rookie year, man. It, it was wild. Um, of course, Joe Flacco went into last season as a starting quarterback. And, you know, a uh, few things happened. Got injured. And Lamar Jackson came in took the starting position and never looked back. And I mean, he's the starting quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, man. Um, man, um, you know, Lamar Jackson, what he brings is different than most quarterbacks. Uh, in, in the past, half, happy lead that we're in right now with the Patrick Mahomes, the the Aaron Rodgers, the Andrew Lux, the Brady's, the, the, the quarterbacks that throw it for that can throw it, you know, 30 or 40 times a game. Um, Lamar Jackson, he he he's a more of a running quarterback. But there are some things that people say because a lot of people say that all he does is run and he doesn't look to pass. A lot of people um, don't real, realize that and. I, I didn't realize it at first, but my man in Graven, he told me about it, and I started looking at more of Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson tape, and I started realizing that Lamar Jackson actually looks to throw the ball before he runs. Like, a lot of, a lot of the runs that he ran were, like, scripted runs. So, it, he, he, he is a quarterback. So, a lot of people try to call him a running back. No, he's, he is a quarterback. He does look to pass the ball. But of course, he's going to use his skill of running the ball, and who wouldn't when you have the, the speed and just the athleticism that he has. I mean, use it to stay away from the injuries, though. But um, we know with Lamar Jackson, it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting year. See, with Lamar Jackson now, um, with him being a rookie last year, not that many teams really had footage and uh, could game plan and could study how he plays. Now he has a full season, and now teams are going to come out looking um looking for ways to stop him and um we saw what happened in the playoffs last year lamar jackson he struggled man first playoff game and um it was interesting man it was one of those games that one of those experience experience um is that um, young young players and young quarterbacks they usually get so um for, if I was a Ravens fan, which I'm not, but if I was a Ravens fan, I wouldn't get too worried for it. I mean, he was a rookie, faced a better team. He faced a great secondary uh, against the Chargers. So, uh, I mean, they picked him apart, but 
you know, Baltimore Ravens. I mean, not the Baltimore Ravens, but Lamar Jackson, young player. I expect him to get better from this. It's going to be interesting, though, man. I wonder, because you know they, they are changing the offense a bit. And yeah, that's going to be interesting. I wonder if they're going to spray it out more, or is it going to be under the under the center and more single back for, formations? I, I'm just wondering how that's going to work out. But Lamar Jackson is going to be interesting, man. Interesting season. I don't expect Lamar Jackson to go out and have a, a 30 touchdown, 30 passing touchdown season or anything. I just wonder how how balanced is Lamar Jackson going to be? Going to be. I, I just wonder um, how balanced is he going to be? But that's pretty much what I had to speak about Lamar Jackson. Let's speak on some of the other positions. So let's go and start with the running back position. Uh, of course. Um, in free agency, they added Mark Ingram, who did play on the uh, New Orleans Saints uh, last year. Uh, really good running back, very underrated running back. Uh, great power running back and run between the tackles. Uh, has the motor to keep on going. I mean, Mark Ingram, and he's, he's a locker room leader. He's just a great person to have on the team. So that definitely help, is going to help out the Baltimore Ravens. Because last year, they really struggled at that running back. Position. I remember they made the trade last season to get Ty Montgomery on um, on that team. So they were trying every everything, to, um, every single way to find a running back on their team. And it looks like they found the um, found a certain running back going to the um, upcoming season. They also have Gus Edwards, to a lot of Baltimore Ravens um, fans talk, um, talk to me about. Said that he has a lot of promise. So I will look out for him too. Um, now let's speak on the wide receiver position also. Um, the wide receiver position is interesting because they lost a lot of talent and a lot of veteran talent, which I, I think, okay, that might help. That, I think that's gonna help out the Baltimore Ravens in the future. You're gonna have players like Chris Moore, uh, Willie Sneed, they drafted Marquise Brown out, out the first round, who's a speedy wide receiver. Uh, of course, played with uh, Oklahoma and uh, Kyler, with Kyler Murray in that air raid system. And, um, you know, we saw we saw what he had, um, the skill that he had in college. Um, first wide receiver drafted in the NFL, in, in the NFL draft. So, he has a lot of potential. Only thing I say is about Marquise Brown, and Lamar Jackson is, I kind of don't like, in my opinion, I would have kind of went after a player like Nikhil Harry or a DK Metcalf, or I would say more of a Nikhil Harry, um, Nikhil Harry, somebody that who can run underneath a big body and can make plays in the air. Somebody that Lamar Jackson doesn't have to be the most accurate for, because we know that I know I, I'm, a, I'm a Lamar Jackson fan, and I think he has. I think he can become a pretty good passer, but we all know Lamar Jackson. He's not the most accurate quarterback, so I think it would kind of help to give him a bigger body receiver. And I don't think they went out to do that because uh, Marquise Brown. He's like five nine, maybe five nine. He's not. He's not that tall. He's not that big, but has a lot of speed. So. Maybe we see some of that, some of those deep routes from um, Marquise Brown to Lamar Jackson. Um, that's somewhat maybe because you know they lost John Brown. Like I said, John Brown was kind of their deep threat, kind of, um, especially when Joe Flacco was there. John Brown really, <laughs> he was really um, pretty much the Ravens' best wide receiver when Joe Flacco was there. But uh, immediately when Joe Flacco um, or immediately when Lamar Jackson came in to Joe Flacco's spot, I mean, John Brown, his um, his production dropped. And um, I could pretty much say that about all of our receivers, man. That's why it's going to be interesting that they drafted Marquise Brown. Um, I wonder how that's going to work out. I'm just real interested. In my opinion, though, I would have I um, drafted to kill Harry, but that's just me. Um, like I said, though, they sell Willis Need, they have Chris Moore. Um, it's going to be real interesting what they're going to do. Um, 
Yeah, we should see that three. We should see that three wide receiver lineup a lot throughout this year. Now at the tight end position, they have Nick Boyle and um, Hayden Hurts, two young tight ends, especially uh, that came in actually were pretty productive last year. So it's gonna be interesting how that works out on their tight end position. Now the biggest question for me is the offensive line position. Um, the offensive line just looks shaky, and this is why. This is why you guys have talent. Like you guys went out and you guys got a Mark Ingram in the free agency, really good running back. But this offensive line is just too shaky, in my opinion. Um, just running through the offensive line is Ronnie Staley, Alex Lewis, Matt Sh Shiruka. Now you do have Marshall Yanda, who who has been a multiple Pro Bowler, All Pro offensive lineman. But then it's Orlando Brown. So it's literally one one offensive lineman, one great offensive lineman who is getting up there in age. But it's pretty much just him and him by himself at the offensive line. And that's not good. That's not good. This is this offensive line is I'm gonna keep it a buck. I know Baltimore Ravens fans are not gonna like this, but this is one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL in my opinion. Um now, I believe that some of your tight ends can block, which I guess that's, that, that's a good thing. Uh, Mark Ingram is a good running back um, blocker, but I mean, the offensive line, the interior of the offensive line has to block. And when you have a young quarterback, Lamar Jackson, who's already not not the most accurate quarterback, and, is, and you're, you guys are trying to make Lamar Jackson more of a balanced quarterback, um, having a good office, offensive line is key. And you guys just don't have that, so that definitely take it. It, it doesn't look it, it doesn't look good for the upcoming season. Maybe some of these young offensive linemen can develop. Maybe Marshall Yanda can take them under under their uh, under his wing and just mold them into a pretty good offensive lineman. But you know the offensive line talent is just not there in my opinion. So we'll see what's good with that. Um, but. That's pretty much all we have to speak on the, off on the offensive side, man. We all know about the Baltimore Ravens. They've never been, even through their best years, they've never been known as an offensive talented team. But they always had enough to, to get things done. Yeah. Um, this offense is pretty interesting with the least, man. So it's going to be interesting what they do on the offensive side. But that's all I'm going to speak on with the offensive side. Now let's go into the defense, man. Let's go into the defense. And the defense is where the Baltimore Ravens have always strived. I mean, just throughout the years. I mean, Baltimore Ravens have always been known for having that dominant defense. I mean, I mean we can go 20 years back. I mean, from the Ray Lewis, Ed Reed era to the, um, well, both times, the early 2000s, the mid 2000s, I mean, the late 2010s, I mean, I mean, every single year, they always have a great defense, man. And this year is no different, but there's some things I want to speak on this defense, but some things have changed. Some things have changed. Um, and we're going to speak on this, man. Um, Chris, uh, this is running through the defensive line. Uh, you got Chris Womley, Michael Pierce, Brandon Williams. Um, Pretty good defensive line, none too crazy. It, it would have helped if they would have went out there if they were, that, were able to get Gerald McCoy and have that three defensive line um, swap out. Because the Baltimore Ravens, they do run a 3-4 also, like the Pittsburgh Steelers. And also, while I mention the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, I do want to apologize for not mentioning Devin Bush and that linebacker. That was a linebacker I was trying to think of was Devin Bush. And... Um, yeah, that just adds to the reasons why I think the Steelers defense is going to be top one of the top um, top notch defense, maybe a top ten defense, surprisingly this year. But anyway, I don't want to get off um, on a tangent. But this um this Ravens defense, of course, is good. A defensive line is of course good. Brandon Williams always been a solid defense uh, uh, player. Michael Pierce has been really good the past years. Did come in to what was a mini camp overweight and had to send him back home. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's something to be worried about too much. Some, sometimes that just happens, but you know, as long as Michael Pierce is um, how he was last season, uh, Michael Pierce is still really good. And then they have um, yeah, Brendan Williams, Michael Pierce. 
Um, nobody else I really know on this defensive line. Hopefully I'm not forgetting somebody again, but that's the two people I do um, realize there. I think it would have been great if they were able to get somebody like Jared McCoy, but missed out on those sweet stakes. Now, with this being a 3-4 defense, and this is my biggest issue with this defense, uh, I will speak on, or you know what? Let's not get to the linebacker core. Let's get to the secondary. The secondary. Uh, let's speak on the secondary. Um, in my opinion, the Ravens might have the best secondary in the NFL. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think they do have the best secondary. There's a few teams in mind that, that can make a case for it, but you know, this is Ravens secondary is amazing man i can go down the list you got jimmy smith who's been a who's been a pro bowl a pro bowl caliber cornerback um recently been you got marlon humphrey who really showed out last year marlon humphrey showed out for real and made his case to be one of the top 15 top 20 cornerbacks in the nfl i mean that's how good marlon humphrey played last year you still got Brandon Carr, who's been a solid cornerback for the longest now. It's a veteran. And even players like Tavon Young has shown, um, has shown some potential to be a pretty good cornerback. So that's just their cornerback situation. Now let's go to their strong safety position. You got Tony Jefferson, who I always like Tony Jefferson. Man. I like what he can do on the, on the field. I like how he can play in the box. He can play almost as another linebacker, which they will need this upcoming season. We'll speak on that. And I mean, he, he can make plays. Tony Jefferson, a great tackler. He can make plays. I mean, he's just a really solid player. I just really like how he can play in the box. Like, I like having strong safeties that can play in the box. I guess that's me uh, being a big Cam Chancellor friend with the Seahawks, man. I always love me some Cam Chancellor. And I don't want to get blasphemous and say Tony Jefferson is Cam Chancellor because we know he's not. But Tony Jefferson has some talent, man. Tony Jefferson has some talent, and, and, and I mean, I, I don't think he gets as much credit as he deserves. Um, and also, another strong city that they have that's pretty good, and Raven Sims would tell me about this too, is Anthony Levine. Anthony Levine, I've seen him make some plays, man. Anthony Levine, to, have, to be known as a, as a pretty much a backup strong safety, for Anthony Levine to be your backup strong safety, you're doing something pretty good. So, um, I think Anthony Levine is, is going to be really, really solid. Um, is going to have a really, really solid season. Um, been really solid for the past year. So, um, I mean, you just run through that secondary. Like, um, that was just, oh, I almost forgot. They added my man Earl Thomas. Just talking about my Seahawks players and Ken Chancellor. They added in Earl Thomas, and I hungry Earl Thomas because Earl Thomas, of course, only played like the first three games last season before breaking his leg. And I know a lot of people are feeling kind of skeptical uh, um, that he that he might not be good anymore because he's coming from a broken leg. Trust me, man. As a, as a Seahawks fan myself, yo, I'll tell you, man. Earl Thomas is one of the hardest workers out there. And Earl Thomas, he's he's gonna come in with a vengeance to play really well. And Earl Thomas, he's a playmaker, man. Earl Thomas is a playmaker, man. Earl Thomas is a playmaker, man. So we just ran through that secondary. We just ran through Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Clark, Tavon Young, Tony Jefferson, Anthony Levine, Earl Thomas. That's the secondary. That's insane. That's insane. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun seeing teams. And there's a lot of past happy teams in this division. We're gonna to have to see Big Ben try to throw it, try to throw it against this secondary. We're going to, have to see Baker Mayfield with his new options at wide receiver with an old Dale and Jarvis Landry. That's gonna be really fun. Our Browns and Raven matchup is gonna to have to be must watch. Just seeing the Browns wide receivers and playmakers try to get open against this secondary. That's must watch football. But like I said, there was something that I really need to speak on this Baltimore Ravens defense that I'm really, really skeptical about. Really, really skeptical about. And that's their linebacker situation, man. Especially with this being a 3-4 defense, man. Especially with this being a 3-4 defense. This might come back and hurt them, man. Um, I want to speak on this real quick, man. Um, the Baltimore Ravens have always been known for a linebacker. Linebackers, man. They had Reed Lewis, of course, for like the, that that 2000 stretch, man. Um, 
had Terrell Suggs for the past year, and now this is a team with not that many good linebackers. Um, let's speak on it, man. Um, they lost in this offseason. The Baltimore Ravens lost three key linebackers this offseason. Three. Three linebackers that all were important and crucial to this defense. They lost C.J. Mosley to the Jets. C.J. Mosley made big plays throughout the Baltimore Ravens um, last year. Really helped their defense in the interior. They lost to Darius Smith, who also went to the Jets. So they lost to Darius Smith and C.J. Mosley. I mean, especially C.J. Mosley. They lost, they lost both of them. Two key linebackers that played a crucial part to their defense. It's just going to be so odd seeing them with not that many good linebackers. And we can't forget that they lost the veteran Terrell Suggs. That really shocked me, man. It's going to be weird. <laughs> it's going to be so odd seeing Terrell Suggs in the Cardinals jersey, man. Just seeing Terrell Suggs in any jersey besides the purple and black is going to be, it's just going to throw me off. Is, is that not going to throw y'all off? It's going to throw me off. But, um, yeah. The fact that they just lost three key linebackers in one offseason, in one offseason, they lost those three linebackers in one offseason. That, that, that's, not, that's not that good. You know, that's not that good, man. And a team that's been predicated on great linebacking play for like the past I don't know what for the past 20 years and they're not going to have that much good linebacker play now people are going to tell me about Matthew Judon he showed something last year and then there's this other linebacker named Patrick Ousa. I can't pronounce the last name I don't know why I just tried that I just botched that name for real um, engraving calls him Peanut so I'm going to just call him Peanut those two linebackers have shown some potential I've seen but you can't tell me after losing CJ Mosley so Darius Smith and Terrell Suggs that their linebacking core is improved or is the same or is anywhere close as good as it was last year. I mean, last year they had the keys to have a really a top five, top top ten linebacking core. Now that just dropped like one of the league's worst linebacking core. So a team that's predicated on linebacker, like they're still running the three four. They're still running the three four defense. So linebacker, linebacker play is always key in three, four defense, and that's going to hurt them, man. That's going to hurt them. So that's going to be interesting how John Harbaugh, what he, how, what he does to maneuver. How, how is he going to, how is he going to play his linebackers this year? How, how is all that going to work? That's going to be interesting. Um, great secondary. We just went through the secondary. Secondary is amazing. I think probably the best secondary in the NFL. Um, but the linebacking core is just, it's not looking good, man. So, I mean, that's pretty much what I, all I have to say for both sides of the, um, both sides of the field. So, you know what time it is now. It's time to rank the Baltimore Ravens and what tier they are. And this was a playoff team last year. They win 10 games. Um, but yeah, I, I it, it, this has been tough because I feel this team has potential to be a player, a, a really good team, a, a contending team. But at the same time, this team has too many holes. So I know Baltimore Ravens fans are going to give me a lot of hate for this one. But look, I'm going to pitch you guys at tier three, man. Tier three. Um, I was really thinking about pitch, putting you guys in tier two, but too many holes on this team on both sides of the field especially the offensive side I mean besides that linebacking core the defense is still going to be I still even with this with the linebacking core being just falling off like that I still expect this to be a top 10 defense but the offense um it, it's just not looking so good I did like the like I said I did like the pickup of Mark Ingram but when you're when when teams are 
Which we all know. We know defense are going to scout Lamar Jackson. Like, we saw what happened in the Chargers game. Now, they're they going to pick up on all that and how ways how ways ways to slow down Lamar Jackson, you know? And there's no good, there's really not that good offensive line play. I think that's key. Definitely when it comes to a young quarterback, Lamar Jackson, you have, you have to have good uh, offensive line play. And the Ravens just don't have that. And there's not that many wide receivers, especially big wide receivers that Lamar Jackson can just throw to. And the tight end play is whatever. They got some pretty good young tight ends, but no just all pro tight ends that I can just name. No Greg Olsons, no Zach Ertz, no George Kittles and whatever. So um, I have to put this team in tier three, man. Could I be wrong? And this team is a real contender. Goes out, wins 12 and 11 games. This the linebacker core is better than I, than I thought it was. Yeah, it can definitely happen. This is the NFL, man. Unpredictable stuff happens all the time, but you know, the Baltimore Ravens, man, I just feel kind of iffy about this team, man. I just really do. Um, still doesn't take away how good that secondary is, man. Like, just running through that secondary um, depth chart is just insane. I mean, it's insane, dude. It's going to be real fun watching the Ravens secondary, how they play. But um, too many holes in my opinion for this team, man. Too many holes in my opinion. I can see Lamar Jackson having a tough sophomore year. And, I mean, I, I like Lamar Jackson. I like the attitude. I like the, the hunger that he plays with. But um, this could be a year that he struggles a bit. So, no. That's just my opinion on it. Just my opinion on it. But... Like I say in all my videos, man, if you guys enjoy NFL, NBA content, want to see some gaming content in the near future, give this video a like. If you're new, go and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. I'm the phenomenal one and I'm out. You do this.